Uh, well, I am a climate scientist. Uh, I also teach at uh, the Pennsylvania State University in uh, Pennsylvania in the U.S. Um, uh, my research focuses on understanding past climate uh, changes and looking at the impacts of human-caused climate change today. I also uh, spend a fair amount of time uh, in talking about the science of climate change and communicating our scientific knowledge to the public. So the hockey stick graph is a graph that my co-authors and I published about a decade and a half ago that attempts to reconstruct how temperatures have varied over the past thousand years. We only have thermometer information that tells us about how global temperatures have changed during the past century or so to get uh, some idea of how unusual uh, the warming trend of the past century is in a longer term context, we have to turn to other lines of evidence from so-called climate proxy records like tree rings and corals and ice cores and sediments. And we use the information in networks of these data to reconstruct past climate and to place the modern changes in climate in this longer term context so we can address questions such as how unusual is the warming of the past century. When we uh, reconstructed temperatures uh, over the past thousand years, what we found was that the recent warming trend uh, really has no precedent as far back as we can go. And in fact, if you look at uh, the change in temperature over time, uh, we see a long-term cooling until the dawn of the Industrial Revolution, and then we see a substantial warming spike that has no counterpart over the past thousand years. And it's the shape of that curve that resulted in the term the hockey stick. So the, the hockey stick um, became uh, somewhat of an icon in the climate change debate. Uh, it became a powerful symbol of human-caused climate change because it tells a simple story. You don't have to understand the complicated workings of the climate system to understand what this graph is telling us, um, that the recent warming trend really is unprecedented uh, as far back as we can go. And by implication, it probably has something to do with human activity to the burning of fossil fuels and the increase in the concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere uh, that have resulted from that. Uh, because it became this potent image of human-caused climate change, it also became an object of attack for uh, so-called climate change deniers, uh, those who have sought to discredit the scientific evidence for climate change, those who have sought to argue that climate change isn't a problem. Uh, this graph, because it's such a potent image um, and because it is a convincing indication of the reality of human-caused climate change, uh, it became a focus of attack, and I, as a result, found myself in the crosshairs of uh, larger efforts to discredit the science of human-caused climate change. Well, I, I think the climate change sort of denial industry um, and, and this uh, consists of fossil fuel interests that have funded think tanks and organizations that are uh, committed to confusing the public and policymakers about the reality of climate change and uh, the various uh, individuals who have essentially uh, served as advocates for fossil fuel interests in attacking the science and attacking the scientists themselves. Uh, I think that effort has unfortunately uh, probably set us back several decades. Um, we should have acted on this problem decades ago. Uh, we should have sought to decrease our burning of fossil fuels, uh, our carbon emissions. Uh, it would have been relatively easy to avoid dangerous warming of the planet had we begun to take action decades ago. Um, instead, because of the very effective propaganda campaign by climate change deniers that was aimed at delaying action, uh, we have not taken substantial uh, actions until uh, recent years to reduce our carbon emissions, and that means it's a far more uphill battle 
to prevent dangerous warming of the planet. Uh, we will have to act even more quickly and more dramatically to prevent disastrous climate change because of the delay brought on by decades of climate change denial. And so it's, it's difficult to underestimate the cost to society that, um, has, uh, that we, have, uh, had to, um, uh, we ha have had to contend with uh, because of uh, this uh, effort uh, by climate change deniers to confuse the public discourse over human-caused climate change. Well, I, in my view, uh, many of uh, the individuals that you encounter you know, on the street, uh, people that you encounter in, your, in our daily lives um, who uh, don't accept the science of climate change, in many cases, they, they are actually victims of this disinformation campaign. Uh, many of them are honest, uh, well-meaning individuals who have been uh, subject to uh, the misinformation and disinformation of the climate change denial campaign and are honestly confused. They actually think that there is currently a scientific debate about human-caused climate change uh, where there is in fact essentially none at this point. Um, the, the climate uh, scientists around the world uh, have now reached a consensus that human-caused climate change is a reality. But the public uh, still tends to think that there is a division uh, within the scientific community that uh, there are two camps of scientists who accept the science of climate change and, and those who don't, uh, when in reality the overwhelming uh, majority of scientists do. And so that has led to widespread confusion among the public. Um, when you encounter somebody who uh, indicates that they don't accept the science of climate change, uh, one should assume initially that you're basically uh, speaking to somebody who is a victim of this disinformation campaign and, and do your best to explain why it is that there is a widespread consensus and to provide resources um, uh, like websites like Skeptical Science that they can go to to learn more about the science. Um, sometimes you engage in those efforts and you find that um, the engagement is not in good faith, that the person at the other end isn't genuinely interested in learning uh, anything about the science, but is really approaching the matter from an ideological standpoint. Um, and at that point, sometimes the most useful thing to do is to move on and uh, to spend your time uh, attempting to engage with and uh, inform those individuals who are honestly confused about uh, the scientific evidence and about the need for taking action. Well, I think it's really important uh, for us as scientists to reclaim the term skeptic and skepticism because skepticism is a good thing in science. As the uh, great scientist and the great science communicator Carl Sagan once described it, uh, skepticism is the self-correcting machinery of science. It's what keeps science on the path towards an increasingly more solid understanding of the way uh, the world works. Um, and we have to encourage skepticism. And real skepticism, good faith skepticism, means that you subject uh, uh, all contentions, all arguments, all conclusions to scrutiny. And you do so uh, looking at the problem from all sides. Uh, and indeed it is the case, as Carl Sagan famously said, that the more extraordinary a scientific claim, the more extraordinary the evidence has to be and the more extraordinary that the uh, scrutiny should be. Um, on the other hand, many of those who call themselves climate change skeptics are nothing of the sort. They're not skeptics because they reject mainstream science, uh, fundamental science. Uh, it's been well established uh, for centuries. Um, and they reject it on the basis of the flimsiest arguments that don't stand up to the slightest bit of scrutiny. Now that sort of one-sided skepticism is not skepticism at all. It's contrarianism, or in its most severe form, it is denial. It is denial of established science. Um, so we have to make sure that uh, people understand that skepticism is a good thing in science, um, and good scientists engage in skepticism, and that takes place in the form of exchanges in the peer-reviewed literature where scientists argue their case, and other scientists uh, might uh, uh, 
you know, uh, argue um, uh, for another viewpoint, and that battle takes place within the context of the peer-reviewed uh, scientific literature, or at scientific meetings where scientists debate the forefront of our knowledge. Um, we have to make sure that we retain that skeptic term, uh, we retain its rightful place in the dialogue, which is good faith skepticism that all uh, good scientists practice, and we have to distinguish that from contrarianism, uh, denialism, uh, which is uh, not skepticism at all, and we shouldn't allow those who practice uh, denialism and contrarianism to call themselves skeptics, because they're not. Well, I uh, continue to uh, research a number of different uh, questions uh, and issues related to the science of, of climate, uh, the science of climate change. Uh, I continue to be interested in uh, paleoclimate, documenting past climate changes, and understanding the factors uh, that were behind them, understanding the role of uh, volcanic eruptions in the deep past, and what that can tell you about how the climate system uh, responds to natural drivers, uh, which can in turn better inform our understanding of how the climate is responding to the unnatural driver of human-caused increases in greenhouse gas concentrations. I'm also interested in understanding the natural variability of the climate system and looking at results of climate model simulations and comparing them with climate observations to better understand natural internal climate variability, to understand phenomena like the El Nino phenomenon. Uh, ultimately, I'm also uh, working on problems related to the impacts of climate change, understanding the impact that climate change is having on uh, coastal risk um, due to sea level rise and uh, increasingly strong uh, hurricanes and typhoons, uh, understanding the impact that climate change is having on infectious disease, on the spread of malaria, um, understanding the impact that climate change is having on river flows uh, and water availability. Uh, so my uh, interests are, are fairly uh, wide and, and varied, and they touch on various aspects of both the natural behavior of the climate system and human-caused climate change.